Uh, let's get things going. Okay. Let's, uh, let's talk about the, 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 the main definition. Barbecuing, grilling, grilling, barbecuing. What's what? Who's what? Are they the same? Why am I talking? Why am I asking you? Who knows? Tell us, Scott. Well, actually, there is a big difference between barbecuing and grilling, and this is actually the most important thing you can learn. Now, grilling is all about high heat cooking. It's done directly over flames, and the food is cooked in a matter of minutes. Now, grilling is best for foods like steaks, burgers, sausages, kebabs, boneless and skinless chicken pieces and veggies. Pretty much anything that takes about 25 minutes or less to cook. Normally, cooking temperatures are around 500 degrees, but some restaurants get up to 800 or even 1,000 degrees. One of the best things about direct grilling is that the food is done fast. The tricky part is timing is everything. Real barbecuing is actually something completely different. It's done on a really low, indirect heat and super, super slow. So when I say indirect, as in the food does not have any flame underneath it, it's kind of like a convection oven inside, but for guys. So, when most people say barbecuing, they actually mean grilling. Now, the secret to being a good griller actually lies in a kind of a hybrid of the two ideas. It's something called indirect grilling. So it's a combination. Now, the reason it works is, well, most guys tend to just slap anything and everything on the grill, no matter what it is, at really high heat. And now, sometimes it just, by fluke, turns out and it tastes great. But sometimes it tastes like something the cat dragged in. More often than uh, not. Yeah. The reason, it's you've used the wrong cooking method, basically. That's true. Now, let's take a usual scenario. The poor chicken leg. Here it is right here. Now, on the outside, it kind of looks cooked. But on the inside, if you have a look at this. Because of the bone in a chicken leg, it actually takes a lot longer to cook. But whereas the skin on the outside, when it's under a, like a direct heat and with high flame, it melts. So it actually gives the illusion that it's cooked when it's not. It's like chicken skin and chicken bone, they don't really mix. That's why you need a different cooking method. OK, this is where indirect cooking comes into play. Simply indirect means you're placing the food on the part of the grate that's not in contact with the flame. You cook with the lid down, and it's going to cook over a longer period of time, so you're slow cooking. The heat rises off the lid, circulates around, and cooks the food really evenly. But it's better than an oven. It's like an oven, but better, because the food, you get that great barbecue texture and flavor. Unlike the direct heat method, with indirect, there's no need to turn the food during cooking. Just place it right on the grill, and it cooks up nice and even all over. In fact, it works so well, you don't even really need to use the rotisserie. It's also a lot more forgiving than direct grilling in terms of timing. And it's a lot faster than true barbecuing that can take like six to 12 hours. Using indirect grilling, a whole chicken or primary roast will be done in a couple of hours. Okay, to set up your gas grill for indirect cooking, it's really simple. All you have to do is turn off one of your burners and leave two on. Now normally it would probably be the left and right on and the center off, or some barbecues have front, uh, center, back. Now, the, your barbecue and how many burners you have, that'll kind of determine your configuration. Now, the heat's going to circulate around and cook our food perfectly. Now, here's the big trick, and this is where most guys screw up. Once the lid's down, they really just can't stand not knowing what's going on in there, and they spend the whole afternoon taking a peek, opening and closing, opening and closing the lid. Now, all that's going to do is going to increase your cooking time, and probably by a minimum of five minutes, but maybe even by 10 minutes for every single time you open and close the lid. OK, so after that big spiel, you're probably thinking to yourself, whoa, back there, funny boy. That goes against everything I know about barbecuing. <laughs> no flame under the meat? Pfft, you're nuts. Well, let me tell you right now, it's not true. It's all about the type of food you're cooking. Say, for a New York strip, direct heat is the only way to go. It's also what gives you the searing. You know, that awesome, crisp, caramelised texture where food hits the grate. One of the big differences from indirect grilling is that when you're using the direct method, you'll need to flip the food once, halfway throughout its grilling time. That's what makes it cook evenly. Before you start grilling, using either the direct or indirect method, one of the most important steps to remember is prepping the grill to prevent food from sticking to the grate. Once the grill is nice and hot, just before you slap on the food, pour some vegetable oil onto a small towel or paper towel and rub it over the grill surface. 
Vegetable oil has little or no taste, so it won't change the flavor of your food, and it has a high smoking point. After you're finished grilling, when the grill is still hot, it's a good idea to clean off the grate with a long handle wire brush to loosen off any nasty bits and get it clean and ready to go for the next time. For a porcelain enamel finish, brass bristles work best. For cast iron, use a steel brush. Food safety is another very important factor to keep in mind. Generally, nothing that comes into contact with raw food should be used to handle or serve cooked food. Always use one plate to bring your raw food to the grill and another to bring your cooked food back to the table. To avoid cross-contamination, you need to wash your utensils at each stage of the cooking process or have at least three sets on hand. One for uncooked meat, poultry and fish, another to handle them when they're cooked, and yet another for your side dishes like grilled veggies. There are plenty of websites available to help you grill food safely. Just do an online search for barbecue food safety for more info and guidelines. Now you'll notice that sometimes during this DVD, we've placed a little garnish of fruit or veggies on the same plate as our raw food. But this was just to make things look a little bit more colorful for TV. We never use them as part of our finished meal. Remember, keep all your raw meat, poultry, and fish in their own little world. Well, that's it. That's our section of uh, grilling versus barbecuing, indirect versus direct heat. So, um, I think it's about time to get grilling. Excellent idea, and I think we should start with the big daddy, oh. the grandfather of the grill, my personal favorite, beef. Beef, absolutely. Well, what a great idea. So uh, right now, I think we're gonna kick into some tunes with the boys. Get along. Come on, boys. 